What was the armory show? In 1913, the Armory Show introduced America to European modernism. The Armory Show was actually called the International Exhibition of Modern Art, which was held at the 69th Regiment Armory in New York City. It was organized by the Association of American Painters and Sculptors and displayed a range of styles. From American realism to Impressionism to European modernism. Although European modernism made up a small portion of the art in the exhibition, it made shockwaves among American viewers and critics. The Fave works by Matisse, and the Cubism of Picasso and Brock were highly criticized. Marcel Duchamp's nude descending the staircase was deemed to look like a pile of twigs. Despite this sensational backlash, which attracted thousands of visitors to both the New York and the additional Chicago location, the Armory Show made an unprecedented impact on American avant-garde artists and collectors. Marking the beginning of modernism's dominance of the American art scene throughout much of the 20th century. What is Yuki Yui painting? In Japanese, Ukiyoe literally means pictures of the floating world. This Buddhist phrase is used to describe a style of Japanese woodblock prints and paintings that developed during the Edo period, 1603 to 1868, and continued on through the 20th century. Woodblock prints from the Edo period were a major influence on Impressionist painters in France and were notable for their use of color, the importance of landscape, and the focus on bourgeois life through images of dancing, theaters, geishas, and urban street scenes. Ukiyo-e woodblock prints are delicately colored with natural dyes and feature thinly outlined forms. They were affordable and extremely popular during the 18th and 19th centuries and were sold by shopkeepers and street vendors in big cities such as Tokyo, known as Edo during the 18th century. Three separate artists usually made woodblock prints, a painter, a carver, and a printer. The painter would first paint the original image. Then, a block of wood, often made of cherry, was carved with the outline of the image to be printed covered in black ink, and then pressed to fine paper. A separate block was carved for each additional color used. This meant that multiple blocks were required for a single print. Sometimes as many as 20 separate blocks. Ukiyo-e woodblock prints depicted the secular, material world. Though artists subtly emphasized the Buddhist concept of the transient nature of physical existence. What is the hieratratic scale? The hieratic scale is a system used to visually communicate power in Egyptian. As well as the art of other cultures, including the ancient Near East and in medieval European art, for example. Significant or important individuals, 
such as pharaohs, were depicted as being much larger than any figures in a scene. In the Narmer palette, the hieratic scale helps to identify Narmer in a busy scene filled with many individuals. What is value? Value is a property of color related to how light or dark the color appears. The higher the value, the lighter the color. For example, light blue pigment has a higher value than dark blue because more white has been mixed into it. Sharp contrasts of light and dark, known as chiaroscuro, can create drama as well as meaning in art. The artist Rembrandt is known for using this technique in his paintings. In The Night Watch, 1642, Rembrandt used chiaroscuro to create a spotlight effect that draws the viewer's attention to the elaborately costumed Captain Franz Banning Cock and his yellow-clad companion. The other figures seem to recede into the background as Rembrandt used drab. Lower value hues for the rest of piece. Who is Gabriel Orozco? Gabriel Orozco, 1962, is a Mexican artist from Jalapa, Veracruz, whose work, including sculpture, photographs, and installations, often subtly alters found objects and is intellectually complex. For example, in the early 1990s, Orozco chopped up a Citroën DS automobile and reduced its width by two-thirds making us think differently about commonly perceived objects. Who was Sophonis by Anguissala? It is true that most professional artists in Europe at this time were men. It was not easy for women to be accepted by patrons and male-dominated guilds. There were women artists, however, and the women who painted professionally were usually part of artist families. Such as Katerina van Hemessen and the Baroque painter Artemisia Gentileschi, the Cremonese painter. Sophonisba Anguissala C1532 to 1625 was different. She was the oldest of seven children in a noble family, whose father was a classical enthusiast interested in giving a humanist education to all of his children. He recognized Sophonisba's natural talent and sent her to train under a respected local painter, Bernardino Campi. She gained esteem for her portraits, including a number of engaging self-portraits, as well as paintings of the Virgin Mary. She was asked by King Philip II of Spain to serve as a lady-in-waiting to his third wife. Isabel de Valois, an extremely high honor written about by Giorgio Vasari. There. She painted portraits of the queen and experimented with mirrors in her self-portraits. In 1552 she painted a miniature portrait, a popular way of depicting friends and loved ones. In which she depicted herself holding a large medallion. 
her name encircles the edge of the medallion while an interlaced monogram made up of her sister's names is in the center. The miniature is now at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. Would they be strong enough to support such a heavy structure? In the year 558 C. E. There was an answer, the dome collapsed, not because of the windows. But due to weakness in the supporting pairs. A reconfigured dome was constructed in its place, steeper and therefore even higher than the original. This new dome, along with extra supports, has survived ever since. Nearly 1,000 years after its construction, the Hagia Sophia was converted to a mosque after the Ottomans took over Constantinople in 1453. What is the difference between subtractive and additive sculpture? Carving is an example of subtractive sculpture because material is removed in order to create an image. Michelangelo believed, for example, that within each block of stone he worked on, there was a figure inside waiting to be revealed. By contrast, the additive process involves building up a form by adding material. Casting and assemblage are examples of the additive process. What is the Narmer palette? The Narmer palette, C. 2950 to 2775 BCE is one of the most important examples of Egyptian art. The shield-like palette was made from a material called greensist and depicts a king identified as Narmer. But is possibly the ruler Menes, who was celebrated for uniting the lands of Egypt under his rule. The story is told through a combination of hieroglyphic writing and imagery. On one side of the palette, Narmer is the largest figure depicted. An example of Egyptian art's use of the hieratic scale, the pharaoh's large size indicates his importance. His hand is raised above his head, about to strike an enemy with a club. The opposite side features the headless bodies of Narmer's enemies. Watched over by Horus, the falcon god of the sky. In a lower register, the cat-like animals have their necks intertwined. All in all, the imagery of the palette serves to proclaim the strength of Narmer and represents the unification of the lands of Egypt. Why did Monet paint Rouen Cathedral so many times? Monet was fascinated by optical realism and painted multiple, over 30. Canvases 184 of the facade of Rouen Cathedral as an exploration of the Properties of ever-changing light and the perception of light by the human eye. Imagine looking across a bright street with squinted eyes. 
trying to make out the buildings on the other side. With its niches and varied textures, the church fagade was a perfect subject for such experimentation. In the intense sunlight, Rouen Cathedral loses detail and its physicality dissolves. Since the sun is constantly moving through the sky, the light reflecting off the building is constantly changing, and Monet attempted to capture the fleeting quality of this light in his work which is also responsible for the unfinished style. Monet embraced the aesthetic value of the quick sketch, though he meticulously worked on these pictures in his studio at Giverny. And he hoped to capture this in his series of paintings of Rouen Cathedral. What are some significant examples of 18th century neoclassical architecture? Chiswick House designed and built between 1724 and 1729 by Robert Boyle. The third Earl of Burlington in West London, England. Greatly inspired by the architect Palladio and his Villa Rotunda. Chiswick House features an octagonal dome and a large but simple portico with an empty pediment. The overall style is restrained, flat, and symmetrical. Pulteney Bridge designed by celebrated Scottish architect, Robert Adam, 1728-1792. Who also designed great buildings such as the Edinburgh City Chambers and Colzean Castle in Ayrshire, Scotland. The unique, Palladian style Pulteney Bridge. Completed in 1773, crosses the River Avon in Bath, England, and is lined with shops. Theatre de Elodian, originally called the Theatre Francais. This austere neoclassical building was designed by Marie-Joseph Payer between 1767 to 1770. Almost completely void of decoration. The portico features columns of the simplest Tuscan order and has no pediment. The building emphasizes its horizontality and geometric symmetry. Monticello designed by Virginia Statements and author of the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson, as his private residence in Charlottesville between 1769 and 1782. With later redesigns between 1796 and 1908. Jefferson was interested in developing a uniquely American style of Architecture that would promote patriotism and help to form the new country's national identity. What is a fate galante? A fate galante is a type of Rococo painting that depicts aristocrats engaging in a small, elegant party. Usually in a beautiful outdoor location, and often involving some kind of amorous, if not erotic activities. This type of painting was first introduced by Jean Antoine Watteau in the early 18th century. And his work, A Pilgrimage to Scythera, 1717, is a good example. The mythical island of Scythera is the location of the birth of Aphrodite, who was formed by sea foam. To the far right, a statue of Aphrodite, also known as Venus, is decorated with flowers. Just below, a group of dreamy, well-dressed aristocrats hold hands and sit close. 
some embracing, in an apparent homage to the Greek goddess of love. Further to the left, a fairy, shaped like a scallop shell and draped with a pink cloth, waits to take the reluctant visitors off the island. Pink cherubs float overhead and the sky is tinged with the color of sunset. Watto's painting reflects the Rococo style with its silky, powdery texture, amorous themes, and aristocratic focus. With a pilgrimage to Scythera, Watto created an entirely new category of painting, the Fate Galante. How did Giotto become so famous? Giotto was a 13th century celebrity. Discovered by master artist Simaba drawing sheep while tending to his flock. As the story goes, he eventually achieved star power not seen by any artist before him. He was written about by Giorgio Vasari, discussed at length by the artist writer, Senino Senini, and mentioned by Leonardo da Vinci as one of the most important artists who came before him. Vasari explained what made Giotto famous, he set art upon the path that may be called the true one. As quoted in Stockstad, Art History, p. 608. Vasari went on to explain that it was Giotto who made the biggest visual breakthroughs in depicting a realistic sense of three-dimensional space in his painting. Giotto's masterpiece is the fresco series he painted inside the Arena Chapel in Padua, Italy. Made for the Scrovengi family and completed around 1305, the frescoes cover the barrel vaulted chapel walls in deep lapis blue and are dotted with stars and discs featuring the portraits of saints. Giotto paints a narrative by dividing the wall up into quadrants, each telling a different part of the story of the life of Christ and the Virgin Mary. Each scene has a sense of depth and the figures are realistically. Modeled by using dark shades for shadow, and whiter shades for highlights. The largest fresco in the series is The Last Judgment, at the west wall of the chapel. In The Last Judgment, Christ raises his hand in blessing. The saved are grouped on Christ's right side and the damned descend to hell on the left. The patron, Enrico Scrovengi is shown offering his family chapel to Christ in an attempt to cleanse his sins. The Renaissance artist Lorenzo Ghiberti said the Arena Chapel was one of the glories of the earth. Quoted in Art Past Art Present 241 What is American regionalism? While some American artists and critics were enamored with European modernism, others like Edward Hopper, 1882 to 1967, Grant Wood, 1892 to 1942, and Thomas Hart Benton. 1889-1975, turned inward and examined American life during the 1930s and 1940s. The quiet, lonely paintings of Hopper, such as his famous Nighthawks, 1942. A painting that depicts a brightly lit, if empty, restaurant interior on a dark night, evoke a sense of isolation. 
Iowa-born artist Grant Wood studied in Paris where he was exposed to the realism of the Northern Renaissance. A realism that he infused into his now iconic painting, American Gothic, 1930. Which depicts a farmer couple, actually modeled by the artist's sister and a local dentist, who stand in from of their clabbered home. Exaggerated to have the look of a gothic cathedral with long, pointed windows. Wood's painting glorifies the hard-working, American farmer. Thomas Hart Benton also memorialized the American worker in his series of murals. For the new school of social research in New York City, called America Today. American regionalism provided a comfortable depiction of America's heartland after the challenges of the Great Depression and World War II. Essentially a realist style, though also occasionally political. It fell out of favor as European-inspired modernism dominated the American art scene during the 1940s. What is Rococo? Rococo is a distinctive style of art, architecture, literature, music and more, popular during the 18th century in Europe. The name comes from French, and is a blend of the word stones and shells. Both popular items in 18th century gardens. Like many other terms such as Gothic and Baroque, the term was created much later and used to disparagingly describe what 19th century critics considered the gaudy, bad taste of the 18th century. Rococo architecture is highly ornate, and characterized by curving. Rather than rigid forms, pastel colors, and an element of fantasy or whimsy. Painting also features pastel colors and witty, frivolous scenes of aristocratic lovers and mythological figures. Though there are occasionally cynical undertones in some Rococo paintings. For example in the prints and paintings of William Hogarth. Rococo first developed as a cohesive style in Paris and is specifically associated with the French King Louis XV and the rise of the bourgeois, or upper middle class. As with other categories of art, regional differences lead to variation of Rococo style. Important Rococo painters include Jean-Antoine Watteau, Jean Honor Fragonard, and Johann Balthasar Newman, among others. What is medieval? The medieval period, also referred to as the Middle Ages, is the name given to the period of European history from the fall of the Western Roman Empire to the beginning of the Italian Renaissance in the 14th century. These terms are generally derogatory, and are linked to the humanist idea that the one thousand years between the classical age and the renaissance were somehow dark or barbaric. In actuality, however, European art from this period was rich and innovative. Drawing inspiration from the diverse cultures thriving in Europe at the time.
What is minimalism? Minimalism is a term that describes simple, geometric art that is often impersonal and made with a new set of materials. Including aluminum, plexiglass, plywood, and steel. Minimalist artists attempted to distill their work into a pure form. Editing any reference to personality, feelings, symbolism, or story. The style became popular during the mid-1960s, though many art critics at the time accused minimalism of being too cold. And questioned whether art could, or should, be produced by industrial means. The term minimalism has been used to describe the art of many artists. From Ad Reinhardt to Eve Klein, Frank Stella to Robert Rauschenberg. The work of artist Donald Judd, 1928-1994, is a good example of minimalism. Judd explored the difference between painting and sculpture with his series of wall structures. Judd's wall structures are composed of a series of machinemata rectangular forms that protrude from the wall. Forms that he called specific objects. The work of artist and Truett, 1921 to 2004, occasionally blurred the line between minimalism and color field painting. However, her minimalist sculpture Grant, 1963, a long wooden beam painted in acrylic was a pure, impersonal, geometric form. What is St. Peter's Square? St. Peter's Square is far from rectangular. From an aerial perspective it actually looks like a keyhole, an oval next to a trapezoid. The space serves as a grand entrance to St. Peter's Basilica at the Vatican. The heart of the Catholic Church. It is defined by a quadruple road colonnade that extends from the basilica's facade and then wraps around an ovoid piazza. Framing a central obelisk brought from Egypt by Roman Emperor Caligula. The shape of the colonnade has been described as a mother's arms that Reach out from the church to embrace the worshippers who gather there. Gian Lorenzo Bernini's design for St. Peter's Square. Known in Italian as Piazza San Pietro, is probably his best known architectural project. It was an incredible challenge to design a space that could contain the crowds that come to the Vatican to hear the Pope and to unify a space that contains styles from so many different periods of history. Bernini's design included hundreds of columns and pillars, along with hundreds of statues of saints. Like the Church of I. El Gisu, Bernini's Piazza San Pietro incorporates many different architectural elements. And yet it maintains a grand and harmonious feel. What is the Book of Kells? The Book of Kells is one of the most famous illuminated manuscripts. And is an example of medieval art that blends pagan design with Christian themes. The Chiro Iota, XPI page of the Hiberno-Saxon Book of Kells is astonishingly complex. 
filled with twisting lines and curling spirals similar to the intricate metalwork found with the Sutton Hu ship. Yet this page proclaims, now this is how the birth of Christ came about as it introduces the Gospel of Matthew. In Greek, the letters Chi, Rho and Iota, XPI, are the initials of Christ. Looking closely at the swooping forms of the Greek letters, one can find human forms incorporated into the abstract design. The letter P curls into a spiral and is punctuated with a sideways red-haired head, which also dots the eye of the nearby iota. This head is thought to represent Christ. Playful animals are also hidden within the design, including cats, mice, otters, and fish, all of which were likely symbolic, although the meaning has been lost over time. The beauty and richness of the Book of Kells demonstrates both the artistic skill and religious passion of the 9th century monks who produced it at the monastery on Iona, Scotland. Who is Jeff Koons? Jeff Koons, 1955, is a controversial, highly successful contemporary artist known for monumental. Brightly colored sculpture and art produced by large teams of assistants. A former commodities broker who trained at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And the Maryland Institute College of Art, Koons creates art that critiques commercialism. For example, he displayed vacuum cleaners in clear, perspex boxes, in a series called The New. 1979, and later began making enormous, highly polished balloon animal sculptures that were praised for their technical virtuosity, and criticized for their over-the-top decadence. Koons is also famous for his large topiary sculpture, Puppy, 1992, and his Rococo-esque sculpture. Michael Jackson and Bubbles, 1988, a golden, ceramic sculpture of the King of Pop with his pet monkey. Koons' art is polarizing because it blurs the line between high art and spectacle which some say is exactly the point. What is installation art? Installation art is art that is more than three-dimensional it creates a complete environment. Entire gallery spaces can be devoted to a single installation, usually but not always temporarily. Installation art became popular in the 1970s and continues to be an important art form today. Installations rely upon the interactions of the viewer slash participant and can even be collected. Which means they are not necessarily site-specific. Eve Klein created one of the first installations with his work The Void in 1958. For this work, Klein presented a completely empty, white-walled gallery. Other famous examples of installation art include British sculptor Rachel Whitehead's Embankment. 2005, which she created for the Turbine Hall at the Tate Modern Museum in London. The piece consisted of tower-like mountains made of thousands of white, plaster casts of boxes. Visitors to the gallery were able to move through the installation allowing 
them to engage with a monumental art form on an intimate level. What is the paradise of Amitabha painting? The paradise of Amitabha is an 8th century wall painting within the Dunhuang Caves. An important Buddhist site along the Silk Road in northwestern China. In the 9th century, the Tang Emperor Wuzong had ordered Buddhist temples and shrines to be destroyed. But Buddhist art in the Dunhuang Caves survived such a fate. In the painting, the large figure seated in the center is Amitabha on a raised platform. Lesser deities and bodhisattvas dance around Amitabha. In a lavish scene that evokes the splendor of paradise. Who is Jenny Halzer? Jenny Halzer, 1950, is a conceptual artist known for text-based installations and public displays. Her earliest work was Truisms, 1977-1979, which consisted of anonymous posters hung up around New York City with one-line phrases such as protect me from what I want. Abuse of power comes as no surprise, and expiring for love is beautiful but stupid. Along with displaying these truisms on posters, Halzer carved words into public benches, created t-shirts, hats, and more. Later in her career, she began to work with LED, light-emitting diode displays, which has garnered her much critical and popular success. For example, she created a 65-foot wide permanent LED display in the lobby of 7 World Trade Center in which text slowly scrolls. Halzer writes many of her own texts, and during her later career she began to appropriate language from international poets as well as text from unclassified U.S. documents, including interrogation transcripts from Abu Ghraib in Iraq. In this case, Halzer projects private words in a public space. Emphasizing the difference between private and public communication. What was the Chicago School? The Chicago School is a name given to a group of architects and designers. Working in Chicago around the turn of the century, including Daniel Burnham, 1846-1912, William L. E. Baron Jenny, 1832-1907, and Louis Sullivan, 1856-1924. One of the greatest engineering innovations associated with the Chicago School is the development of the steel-framed skyscraper. The use of iron and steel allowed engineers to build ever taller buildings. Usually for commercial purposes. Some of the earliest skyscrapers include the Home Insurance Building, 1884. And the 10-story Rand McNally Building, designed by Burnham and Root in 1889.
What is Viking art? The term Viking art or Norse art refers to the art produced by the peoples of Scandinavia. Which includes modern day Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. Much like Anglo Saxon and Hiberno Saxon art, Viking art featured the animal style. Early medieval Scandinavians also practiced memorial ship burials in which important people were buried at sea with their valuable earthly goods. The burial ship from Osberg, Norway, c. 834, was over 75 feet long, and contained the interred bodies of two women. As well the skeletons of around 10 horses. The front and back of the ship, the prow and stern, were formed into large spirals and the ship itself is covered in intricate animal carvings, including dragons, which were popular motifs in Viking art. What is a stupa? A stupa is a hemispherical Buddhist monument based on Southeast Asian burial mounds, but not used as a tomb. After his death, the Buddha's cremated remains were placed in small containers known as reliquaries and buried in the earthen stupas. Buddhist pilgrims worship the Buddha's remains by walking clockwise around the stupa which mirrors the revolutions of the earth and sun. Stupas do not have to be large some of them are small enough to fit in the palm of a hand. They represent the Buddhist concept of the world mountain and are sacred diagrams of the universe. What is the Gupta style? Associated with art produced during the reign of Gupta rulers, who ruled in eastern India from c. 320 to 450 CE, the Gupta style is characterized by naturalistic. Though idealized, images of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas in both painting and sculpture. A great example of the Gupta style is the wall painting of the Bodhisattva known as the beautiful Padmapani, painted in the late 5th century. Padmapani is shown as serene and relaxed, withdrawn from the material world swirling around him. Strong outlines emphasize the form of the figure, but the rest of the body is smooth and anatomically undefined. With downcast eyes, the painting exhibits the Gupta emphasis on naturalism, balance, and spiritual detachment. Why is St. Mark's Basilica in Venice considered an example of Byzantine architecture? During the pre-modern era, the Italian city of Venice had many political and cultural ties to the regions east of Italy, and was therefore quite influenced by the culture and art of the Byzantine Empire. St. Mark's Basilica is a grand architectural example of this influence, and was especially inspired by the Church of the Holy Apostles in Constantinople. The basilica, 
whose chapel holds the relics of Saint Mark the Apostle, is divided into five sections, each topped with a dome. The interior walls are covered in marble and over 8,000 square feet of glittering mosaics. Many of which illustrate stories from the life of Saint Mark. The style is similar to that of Byzantine mosaic designs found at San Vital in Ravenna and other Eastern European churches. The mosaics were a work in progress for hundreds of years. And the basilica was consecrated as a cathedral in 1807. Who is Mariko Mori? Mariko Mori, 1967, is a contemporary Japanese artist whose work includes videos, photographs, and installations, such as Tom N. A. Hu, 2006, a high tech, monolithic structure whose light changes and blinks as it reacts to information recorded by the Super Cameo Konda Neutrino Observatory in Tokyo. Mori's work is often influenced by technology and Buddhism. What kind of art was made in Ilifat? Alife was the capital of the Yoruba people of Nigeria from the 13th to the 15th century. An era known as the pavement period due to the Yoruba practice of paving parts of the city with rectangular rows of stone and pottery fragments laid out in a herring bone pattern. Alife was an important center for the arts, and the Yoruba established a long tradition of portraiture including works in stone, wood, and terracotta, as well as later works in bronze, brass, and other metal alloys made using the lost wax casting method. Portrait sculpture played an important role in ritualistic ancestor worship, and sculptures were often ornately decorated with veils, wigs, crowns, or neck rings, particularly during important ceremonies. What is Abstract Expressionism? Abstract Expressionism, which lasted from the 1940s to the 1960s was an American movement influenced by European modernism, surrealism, and non-Western art traditions. Surrealist principles of psychic automatism were particularly influential, as was the influence of psychology and mythology. Abstract expressionist paintings tend to be very large and intense, and feature dynamic, bold colors. For many abstract expressionist artists, the creative process itself was as important as the work. Abstraction expressionist paintings do not represent a specific visible subject. But they do communicate emotions and other less tangible subjects. Artists labeled as abstract expressionists were diverse in their approach and styles. The movement can be divided into multiple categories and sub-styles. The most prominent being action painting and color field painting.
What is the Great Serpent Mound? The Great Serpent Mound is a curvilinear burial mound in the shape of a curling snake located in the southern portion of Ohio. This monumental earthwork is nearly a quarter of a mile long and is still clearly visible. The Great Serpent Mound was at first attributed to the Adena culture, which flourished in the early woodland period. C300B.C.E-1000 CE, and was known for building monumental mounds used for burial. The site is now thought to be the work of the slightly later Mississippian culture and has been dated to around 1070 CE serpentine forms appear on other types of Mississippian art and serpents, as in many other cultures, were associated with fertility and harvest. Some scholars however, believe that the shape of the Great Serpent Mound mirrors the path of Halley's Comet which was visible in the year 1066, the Bayou Tapestry also records this event. Was John Singer Sargent an Impressionist? Not exactly. John Singer Sargent, 1856-1925, was a supporter of Impressionism and dabbled in the movement. But his interest in light did not extend all the way to completely dissolving any forms in his work, as was common with the Impressionists. Sargent was born in Florence to wealthy American parents but spent the majority of his career painting portraits for members of high society in Britain and France. He was highly successful as a portraitist and tended towards realism. He was roundly criticized, during his lifetime and after, for making superficial art. In 1929, the art critic Roger Fry called Sargent undistinguished as an Illustrator and non existent as an artist, as quoted in Sargent, John. However, since the 1970s, his reputation has been on the rise. Scholars now note Sargent's ability to emphasize psychological drama in works such as Daughters of Edward Darley Boyd. 1882 which recalls the sophistication of Velázquez's Las Meninas. His most famous portrait, Madame X, 1883-1884, caused a scandal for its twisted pose and sexuality. While at the time it was a disappointment, it is now acclaimed for its juxtaposition of the pale. Porcelain skin of Madame X, Madame Pierre Gautreau, with the soft, velvety texture of her skin-tight black dress. In his later years working in Boston, Sargent painted mostly watercolors. Preferring to distance himself from portraiture. Though he was not really an impressionist, Sargent is now considered an innovative. 19th century artist who occasionally painted with an impressionist palette. What are some examples of postmodern art? Many postmodern art movements are described as neo-movements. 
because they respond to earlier modern styles or approaches. Here is a sampling. Neo-expressionism Neo-expressionism is primarily focused on painting. Though 252 some sculpture is considered neo-expressionist, and first began in Germany in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Neo-expressionist paintings are usually vibrant, sometimes figurative, but often raw and self-aware. Neo-expressionist artists include Anselm Kiefer, 1945, from Germany, and the American Julian Schnabel, 1951, whose large, brash paintings have been highly financially successful. Neo-geo Neo-geometric conceptualism, or Neo-geo Developed in New York City in the mid-1980s and is characterized by postmodern appropriation and a strong sense of irony. Artists associated with Neo-Geo include Peter Halley, 1953, and Ross Blecker, 1949, who brought new symbolic meaning to familiar modernist forms. Artists such as Ashley B. Curtin. 1959, and Jeff Koons, 1955, are neo-geo artists more interested in consumer culture. And their art is sometimes also categorized as post-pop. Neo-pop Neo-pop is another term for post-pop. An art movement that developed under the influence of pop art in the 1980s. Neo-pop artists include Heim Steinbach, 1944, Alan McCollum, 1949, Jeff Koons, 1955, Ashley Bickerton, 1959, and Takashi Murakami, 1961. Neo-pop artists frequently use pre-existing, everyday objects also known as ready-mades, in their work and question the values of mainstream culture. What is digital art? Digital art is art made by using digital technologies, such as a computer. Digital art is now more commonly referred to as new media art and can include two-dimensional images. Whether printed or not, made with software programs such as Adobe Photoshop, for example. Three-dimensional works, or even multimedia works such as animations or videos made using computer software. What is Vanita's painting? Vanita's paintings were popular in Dutch and Spanish, still life painting during the 17th century. They are symbolic of beauty, material luxury, and the brevity of life. In Harman Steenix 1640 an allegory of the vanities of human life. The artist depicts a tabletop covered with a jumble of trinkets and various objects. Illuminated by a powerful beam of light entering into the frame from the upper left. The items on the table include a skull, oil lamp. Musical instruments, a watch, a sword, a seashell, and books. Luxury items such as the sword and the exotic shell represent wealth and material possessions, other items. Such as the skull, oil lamp, and timepiece, serve as a memento mori, or a reminder of death. 
Other common symbols found in Vanitas paintings include candles, flowers, exotic fruit, and hourglasses. What is a tympanum? A tympanum is a semicircular space often located above a door, also known as a portal. In Romanesque churches such as the Abbey Church of Saint Lazare in Autun, France, this space is filled with architectural relief sculpture. Common tympanum scenes include the Last Judgment, in which Christ is represented saving blessed souls and sending the damned to hell. What is lithography? Lithography is a method of printmaking in which the artist draws an image on a smooth, polished stone with a special dense crayon. Ink applied to the surface of the stone clings to the greasy crayon, allowing the lithographer to press the image and make a print. Developed in the late 18th century, lithography allows the artist to draw freely without carving. Who was Henry Moore? Henry Moore, 1898-1986, was one of the most significant modernist sculptors and arguably the most important British sculptor, of the 20th century. His work was influenced by non-Western art, especially Mayan art. His abstractions of the human form, such as Reclining Figure, 1929, were directly inspired by Chicmul figures, which also recline, from Chichen Itza in Mexico. Representations of reclining forms, family groups, and mother and child peers were an enduring subject for the artist. Moore's style is described as biomorphic, meaning that his figural abstractions are often soft, undulating, and organic. He also produced large sculptures that were hollow and pierced. Emphasizing the mystery of negative space. Moore was incredibly prolific in his later years. Requiring teams of assistants to produce monumental works of public sculpture, which can be seen around the globe. What is Stonehenge? Stonehenge is perhaps the most famous megalithic structure from the Neolithic period. And an example of a large-scale cromlech. Its name comes from the Saxon language and means the place of hanging stones. The site, located near Salisbury in England, about 80 miles west of London was built over a thousand years starting from around 3000 BCE 17 enormous megaliths weighing up to 50 tons each remain standing in an approximate circle. Those scholars think the site originally included at least 30 megaliths. Altogether, Stonehenge is made up of around 150 simple 
non-decorated stones, some of which have fallen down and broken. At the center of the site is an altar stone, though whether the stone was used as such is unknown. It is unclear exactly how Neolithic people constructed Stonehenge. The blocks alone are extremely difficult to move and both scholars and amateurs have attempted to recreate the engineering marvel. The post lintel system is evident in the megalithic Henges themselves. And it is notable that no mortar was used to hold them together all of the joints are dry joints. It is possible that timber played a role in the construction of Stonehenge. Though any timber remains have since disappeared. How were painters to respond? As is clear with Impressionism. 19th century artists did not simply stop being interested in realism, this interest merely shifted. Because of the camera, artists in the latter half of the 19th century began to experiment with optical realism and the capturing of movement in a whole new way. In Manet's great painting, Bar at the Folies Berger, 1881-1882. A room full of dancers appears blurry, as they would in a photograph, and is an indication of movement. Photographs are also notable for their ability to capture a slice of life. And paintings such as Degas Off Center El Absinthe, 1876, does just that. Degas crops the picture by slicing through an angled cafe table and cutting off the elbow of a cigarette smoking patron. In a period when artists were already questioning the value of the academic art tradition, the development of photography encouraged 19th century artists to continue to experiment with their techniques and their subjects, and to question the supremacy of classical aesthetic values. What is the Isenheim altarpiece? The Eisenheim altarpiece, c. 1510-1515, is a highly realistic altarpiece painting done by the German painter Matthias Grunewald, who was a painter at the court of the Archbishop of Mainz. The work is complex, incorporating exterior paintings on the wings of the altarpiece with interior paintings that are revealed upon opening. The exterior subject is the crucifixion of Christ. Painted in gruesome detail and emphasizing Christ's suffering against a dark background. His fingers are bent and broken and his emaciated body hangs heavily from the cross. The interior paintings are completed on multiple panels and include the Annunciation. The Virgin and Child with Angels, and the Resurrection. These interior works are brightly colored and emphasize hope and joy over suffering. The physical act of opening the door is symbolic of the salvation that comes from Christ's sacrifice. The Eisenheim altarpiece is emotionally expressive and a powerful example of the role of art in the Christian tradition.
What is a dolmen? In Celtic, dol means table. A dolmen is a tomb made of three enormous stones known as megaliths. Two vertical megaliths support a third megalith, which rests flat like a tabletop. Essentially mirroring the post and lintel system. Dolmens are usually built into a mound of earth. Forming an interior burial chamber big enough to hold a single body. Dolmens were later used as passage entryways into larger structures. Who were the Brackmans? Felix Brackman, 1833-1914, and his wife Marie, 1840-1916, were both artists associated with the Impressionist style and were part of the artistic social circle that included Degas, Rodin, Manet, and Whistler. Felix was mostly a printmaker and specialized in etching. He is credited with popularizing Japanese prints, known as ukiyo-e. Amongst the Impressionists, especially the work of Hokusai, Marie Brackman was primarily a painter and began her career by designing decorative porcelain, which attracted the attention of Degas. Though largely absent from art history survey texts, Marie Brackman was one of the premier women artists of the 19th century. Her career was not well supported by her husband, and she did not produce a body of work as large as her contemporaries. Mary Cassatt and Bert Morisot, however. Her work was exhibited at the Paris Salon in 1874 and she exhibited at multiple Impressionist shows as well. How are the landscapes of Constable and Turner different? John Constable, 1776-1837, and Joseph Mallard William Turner, 1776-1851, were both successful British landscape painters. And yet their styles and approaches to nature were almost completely opposite. After spending some time training at the Royal Academy School in London, but disliking academic convention, Constable dedicated himself to studying nature and searching for truth in his home village of East Holt, in the Suffolk countryside. In an attempt to garner respect for landscape painting, Constable's canvases were very large. His painting, The Haywain, Landscape, Noon, 1821 is over six feet long, for example. His paintings are clear, detailed, and infused with emotion, which is expressed in heavy clouds, reflective ponds, and glistening foliage. Usually calm and pristine. Constable's landscapes offer a subjective image of the manicured English countryside. By comparison, Turner's landscapes are a whirlwind of drama and dissolved images. And present nature as an overwhelming power capable of consuming man and his impermanent structures. Turner is known for his enormous oil paintings, as well as innovations in watercolor. 
particularly the borderline abstraction of his sweeping brush strokes. Turner's paintings were shocking at the time. His 1842 painting Snowstorm, Steamer Off a Harbor's Mouth, for example, depicts a ferocious ocean storm within with the actual steamer is barely visible. And it is nearly impossible to differentiate between the swirl of dark clouds and the thrusts of the thrashing waves. Unlike Constable's careful, controlled nature, Turner's is a monster. Who are some of the important international artists working today? The contemporary art world is increasingly international in scope and a number of artists from around the world have achieved critical acclaim and success. The following is a short list of some of these artists. What is the Spanish Golden Age? The Spanish Golden Age lasted from the 15th to the 17th centuries. During which time Spain was one of the wealthiest countries in the world and arts and literature flourished. This period of Spanish dominance began after 1492, when Spanish Christians reconquested Spain from the Moors and sponsored Christopher Columbus' journey across the Atlantic. Securing Spain's power in the New World. It faded as the Spanish Habsburgs lost power and Spain lost a succession of wars. Including wars with the Netherlands and England. It was during this time that Cervantes wrote Don Quixote and buildings. Such as the Palace of Charles V and El Escorial were constructed. Also at this time, significant Spanish painters such as El Greco, Diego Velázquez, Francisco de Zerberan, Bartolomé Murillo, and José de Rivera were active. Why was Charlemagne interested in illustrated manuscripts? The medieval ruler Charlemagne was crowned Holy Roman Emperor in the year 800 and controlled a territory that included Germany, France, the Netherlands, and parts of Italy. As Holy Roman Emperor, Charlemagne's goal was to unify his secular government with the Christian Church and to restore the Western Roman Empire, albeit as a Christian kingdom. Charlemagne clearly saw the power of arts and education as a fundamental part of his campaign. And he turned to monasteries the intellectual centers of the medieval world to support his mission of conquering all of Europe. Charlemagne's court in Aachen, Germany, became a leading center for artists including architects, sculptors, and illuminators. Charlemagne's scriptoria in Aachen produced some of the most important illuminated manuscripts of the of late 8th and 9th centuries in Europe, which resulted in the spread of Christianity. The standardization of church practices, and the solidification of the emperor's power across Europe.
What was Cahokia? Cahokia was the largest pre-Columbian city in what is now the United States, and peaked in size with a population of nearly 25. 000 between the years 800 and 1500 bigger than the city of London at the time. Like the Great Serpent Mound, Cahokia was built by the Mississippian people and featured numerous earthen mounds the result of a huge labor effort. There were around 120 mounds at Cahokia, the largest, known as Monk's Mound. Was 100 feet tall, aligned to the sun. And possibly used as some kind of astronomical observatory in a manner similar to Stonehenge. Evidence of the city can be seen in southern Illinois. What is postmodernism? Postmodernism is a complicated term and a complicated theory. Which can be applied to art, architecture, literature, philosophy, and more. Literally meaning after modernism, postmodernism has been described as everything from a rejection of modernism to a critique of modernism to a new phase of it. So, postmodernism is either anti modernism or just more of it. Either way, postmodernism is defined in relation to its earlier counterpart. If modernism is unified and serious, then postmodernism is varied and playful. If modernism is a search for absolute truth, then postmodernism is a declaration that there is no such thing. Postmodernism began to be recognized as an approach to art starting in the 1970s and is perhaps most easily recognized in architecture. A good example of modernist architecture is Jared Riotveld's Schroeder House, 1924, which was designed with a uniform style, complete with coordinating furniture and interior design. By contrast, the Piazza d'Italia in New Orleans, designed in 1975, reflects the influence of various styles of architecture from Renaissance to Baroque to Modernism and is made up of a multitude of forms and colors. Where Schroeder House was stylistically unified, the Piazza d'Italia is stylistically diverse. <laughs> 